welcome to Under the Onion Skin, the podcast to get closer to independent animation directors and get to know some behind the scenes of their short films. My name is Giulia and each time I talk to a different director about a short film they made. With this podcast I hope to be able to capture a glimpse of what I love mostly about festivals, to have something to listen to when we're back to our regular lives, but above all to celebrate beautiful films, talented artists and storytellers. Welcome to Under the Onion Skin. In this first episode of Under the Onion Skin, I'm talking with Portuguese director Laura Gonçalves about her 2D animated documentary The Garbage Man, 11 minutes long, in which she interviewed her family about her uncle, who worked as a garbage man in France for 30 years. I had the chance to catch Laura in Annecy Festival in June 2023, au bord du lac, and to have a quick swim in the lake before our interview. In this episode, among other things, we talk about family, documentary and slime. Enjoy. And yeah, we never really, I think we never really had a moment to chat. That we, yeah. So I think it's, yeah, it's good. It's like the first time I get to know you yeah, better. That is true. Yeah. And we just cut the, the ice by going to the water. To the slime. <laughs> the slime. Yes. Walking on slime together. That was good. It was a nice icebreaker. <laughs> yes. I, I'm very curious about your creative process and especially uh, talking about the garbage man because it's a, a documentary approach. Yeah, what's behind that or how you combine the animation direction with the documentary? Well, documentary, always, all my films are documentary. It's something yeah. that I wanted to, to do from, and that's how I started making. My first film was because I wanted to give voice and to portrait something that I experienced, which in that case was my family. So it started with my family. And now this film, The Garbage Man, is also about my family. Yeah. Um, but it was something that I, uh, that I wanted to do, to use real voice, real sound, and uh, work with the expression, expression of animation. So... Um, adding to the the reality, adding that part of you mm-hmm, as a filmmaker, mm-hmm. as a, an artist, if you want, yeah. drawer, animator, whatever, that uh, it's your interpretation of what is happening, whatever thing is, if it's real, if it's a uh, present, if it's memory, if it's other people's stories. Mm-hmm. So in The Garbage Man, I really wanted to... Uh, records my I really wanted to portray my family talking uh, about my uncle something that happens at the table and uh, we share that moment even if we just see each other for three or four times a year but we always have this moment of gathering and we love to be with each other and mm-hmm. that conversation comes up a lot so uh, yeah in, in terms of documentary I think that um, It's a personal story, but at the same time, I feel like it can talk to a lot of people and it can um, represent a lot of moments of other people. And I think that animation has that beauty of, you know, like it doesn't, it's not filming one person, it's representing one person, but you can really identify in lots of different places. And cinema as well, you know, like it's very powerful tool to talk about a lot of things and get to people so yeah i really love animated documentary and um, i really want to keep doing that to you know Mm -hmm. record people talking about their stories and their experiences and for this particular film the process was like first recording then do a cut of audio or how did you or first making a sort of storyboard of what you wish and to have and then see what material you get what was the, the the process so I usually what I do is that um, I create first a timeline of um, the recording so the sound everything is based on the sound yes and then I start working on the images after uh, that I have like a narrative kind of yeah. set in this case in the in the garbage man I had uh, uh, some interviews um, but I built a lot of 
I went to get more interviews in like while people were already animating I still went mm. to get more interviews so it was quite chaotic it didn't have like yeah I mean you never know what you get in the interview yes, so you have exactly. to adapt and, and it's good that it was your family so it was easier to yeah. get them no especially for that you know that moment of you know you're you know like when you don't know the people you kind of need to build some uh, some trust and that was that work was kind of halfway done already mm. <laughs> of course i just had the zoom um the zoom to record i don't usually uh, film or mm -hmm. take photographs um so that was less you know um how would you say intruding yes, you know yes. so people felt you know like it was me they trusted me so that was quite easy but it was uh, yeah I had the timeline and people were animating but I felt like okay I need more things here so I found a lot of interesting things after I, I went back and I asked more questions and people gave me more so it was quite an interesting uh, process process yeah. and, and also learning because I yeah. learned a lot about my family through making oh, this film that I didn't know. That's great. I mean, you already yeah. you wanted to make the film because you already had in mind maybe something, but then while researching... Yes, uh -huh. while I was uh, interviewing, I was talking about things that I knew was more about his, you know, like he was a garbage man yeah. and he worked in France. This, this is a part I know. But then there's a whole history be mm -hmm. before that, yeah. during the dictatorship, during the war, during the immigration. Uh, and that I found out through these interviews. So it was very interesting. It was uh, um, if if it didn't brought me anything, it brought me closer to my family because yeah. I got to spend a lot of time with them and to talk, to learn about things. And that do happened. you think, like maybe I don't know, subconsciously or not, one of the reason why you make made it or you want to make a film about your family is also to, for that, like to get closer to them, to talk more. Sure, yeah, yeah, I wanted to know more about my uncle. One of the reasons why I wanted to make this film was because I knew about this part of his life, mm -hmm. this life but I didn't know about... Uh, I knew that he was in a war, and I knew there was like a portrait, this portrait with a monkey, Yeah. but I didn't know anything about it, you know? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So it was really like a real research, like a live yes. research. It was, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I thought about, you know, going to talk with people that he was in war with to understand a little bit more. But then I, I, I didn't want to do that. I, I wanted to portray actually the, the lack of knowledge about what happened there. That's mm -hmm. what, you know, like genuinely what yeah. was going on and is going on in, in my family. So no one could mm -hmm. really talk about things that happened because he never talked about them. So I never got to know things um, before my uncle died, and that's what the film also portrays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did you get the feedback from your family? Or? Uh, yes, I did. I mean, I was three years making this film. Yes. <laughs> and they had no idea what was going on. Ah, they didn't was know going... anything. I mean, they no. knew you were recording, but... Yes, I said, I was, I'm recording and I'm going to make... A f I wanted to make a film about Uncle. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know what was going to happen. Okay. And uh, I didn't show them anything either during the three years. Until the end. Until the end, which was really beautiful because I premiered in Mostra, in ah, Lisbon. I didn't know. Yes, and my family went. So they actually went and the, these are people that never come out. Oh, wow. They Was never... it very emotional? Like for you also, but for them? <coughs> it was very emotional for 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 me, for, for them as well. I mean, they don't usually go to the cinema because they're from a small town, you know, where there is um, no cinema. There is... There's not much culture going on either. There's not that the really chance of yeah. actually going to the cinema. So for them, everything was really new and overwhelming. And watching, you know, the film on the big screen for the first time, um, they were very, you know, se sensitive. What do you call it? Uh, they were very touched. 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 Yes, yes. Touched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, that's so, so it was really good. Nice. And then I would, uh, I wanted to do something like a gathering of all the family and do a, yeah. a lunch and uh, have the proje projection of the film to everyone, to family and friends in my parents' house. Ah. So that was very special too, because that was in August, during August, and while the, um, the immigrated part of the family was there from France, so it was really special as well to have that moment. It was something that I really wanted to do, to do the proje uh, projection for everyone. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. very nice. I think because, as you said before, of course it's a story that many people can relate to. It's a, a metaphor for many things, you know, it's very relatable, yeah. but for it's also your own personal story. So the direct uh, actors or the direct uh, uh, protagonists, yeah. for them it, that might be even even nicer or like even more special yeah it is i mean they don't they don't really watch animation that much and for them yeah. it's a little bit kind of abstract yes, what yes. i was doing I know. and uh, when they saw it I, th i think that they didn't really you know understand everything sure. exactly but there's something there you know that they understand okay this is like they hear their voices they recognize themselves like amongst yeah. who's talking And they say, okay, this really happened. So they like their feedback mostly was like, that is really true. You did it. Yeah, you, you tell the truth. Yeah. Yes. So that was very uh, comfortable to know that they understood. Yeah. You know. And so. also, yeah, I guess also that they approve. You know, because. Yes. Yeah. It's... That was something that I was also concerned a lot mm. throughout the process because, you know, one thing is nice is that, you know, even if you know no one cares about the film and no one really gives value to it I am always going to give value yeah. to it because it's my family talking it's something that is very special to me and I really I really appreciate that it's something that I'm going to save always mm -hmm. but in uh, I didn't know how they felt about it so it was actually all really nice you know like yeah I mean I think it is when you do a documentary it's You really have to keep in mind that you're telling the story of someone. So yeah. it is very important to understand what they think about it. Yeah. And I think it's good that it was your family because maybe it is easier to to understand if what they want, if they like it, or to yeah. maybe ask directly. So. Yes, it was a part of it was also like making sure that I was, you know portraying well yeah, what this yeah. is the feeling of me being with them okay well, that's very, very interesting genuine. yeah yeah oh nice thank you thank you uh, nice. i always have a final question okay uh, because of uh, the podcast it's called under the onion skin because <laughs> i i get under the skin of my of the other person but also onion skin I actually love that title. Thank you. So, <laughs> do you like onions? <laughs> I love onions. Yes? Yes. What's your favorite way of eating onions? Oh, nice question. Or is I there mean, a the, the most healthier, yeah. The most healthier way is fried. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but I don't actually have that much fried onion. But we actually do a lot in, Portu in Portugal. We do a lot of... Um, what do you call it? The... Um, Refugad, uh, I don't know how you say it in, um, in even in Italian. Is it? It's not fried. Yeah, like uh, it's not fried, but you put you just put the onion with uh, with the garlic and with the olive oil. Mm. So that's the base of uh, yeah. gastron so, so gastronomy in Portugal. <laughs> I think as in it, I think it's like a sofrito. Like how you do you say? Sofrito. sofrito. It's like a. Pff, But you just let it a go sizzling. golden. Yeah, yeah. Golden. Yeah, you know the smell with the lordo there. And then you do anything with it. And then that. you just put whatever you want. But that's the base, you know. Yes. So that's my favorite. It's like that smell of onion mm -hmm. on, and garlic on the on the pan. Yeah. That's cool. How do you say onion in Portuguese? Cebola. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Under the Onion Skin. It was a real pleasure to meet Laura and talk to her about her process. You can find more about her on bapstudio.com. All the details are in the show notes. That's a wrap for today. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, with another director and a short animated film. Ciao!